men have 80% more upper body muscle fiber and 50% more lower body muscle fiber on average than, than women do. Yeah. And, you know, that explains a lot of what we're seeing in the swimming contest with the, the guy who thinks he's a female, but he's actually a biological male who's mm -hmm. 400 and some odd place, you know, in the, in, the, in the men's competition. And now he's first place in the women's. Okay, so you mentioned the transgender people, and I have a question about that, actually. And I think I know the answer based on what we've been talking about. If you have a guy who thinks he's a girl and hasn't taken any kind of hormones, will he bond like a man, even though he thinks he's a woman? Like, I'm guessing at the biological side of things is going to mean that he bonds in a masculine way. Yeah, it's... It's interesting because most of, most of them that I know of that are in that situation, they maybe dress like a female, they're a man to begin with biologically, mm -hmm. and they dress like a female, they end up um, being attracted to females, you know, so, um, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm not an expert in this area. My, my expertise is mostly in, in heterosexual. I know enough about this, though, to, I guess, be informative to you. Um, my, again, from what I understand, they're, they are sexually reactive in the way that a typical man would be to a woman, which again is strange because, but I guess if they're considering themselves a woman and they're considering themselves a lesbian, I guess that's how they're, that's how they rationalize it in their mind. The process on that real quick. Um, again, we can talk more about in the next time, all of these things. Yeah. Uh, the process on transgender is, is interesting and it's, and it's similar to other sexual orientation, I would say anomalies. That's all what it calls an anomaly the process that takes place that makes a, a let's just say a man feel like he's a woman mm -hmm. when it's authentic now i think there's a ton of it that isn't authentic i think a, there's a ton of it that's social contagion type of a thing mm -hmm. but the physical process as far as we can tell right now that causes the legitimate ones to feel this way is that in utero there's all these important things in utero that we can talk about next time too um the way it works with male versus female, you know, XX versus XY chromosome babies, XY mm -hmm. being males, is that almost always um, when it's an XY chromosome baby, about six weeks into the pregnancy, up to six weeks, the male and the female body are just exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. We're all prototype female to start off with. It's only the XYs where the testes start developing and, and the testes starting to develop and get and secrete testosterone which causes all the rest of the genitalia to develop in a male way and also the you know, in, inner things like the prostate gland and all that mm -hmm. but all out of the same tissue all it's the same tissue whether you're male male or female um when that occurs it occurs in the first trimester so the again about six seven weeks into it and creates the male genitalia first of all then almost always throughout the, the pregnancy um that same presence of testosterone that the that his tes testes are, are manufacturing is there and organize the brain in a male typical way. So the baby at, at, in the third second and third trimester gets his 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 in this case brain organized that way. So it matches genitalia to brain. There are extremely rare occasions like one in one in ten thousand one in ten thousand times births. Uh, something happens in that process where the, the testosterone is present, you know, in the first trimester and they get the genitalia, the male genitalia, but it's not present in the second and third. And so, again, by de default, the, the, the baby's body is, is female. And so it comes out with male genitalia and female organized brain. And again, again, the, at puberty and even before the, the puberty, there's a, um, a, a phase called ad adrenarchy. Uh, that organized, that brain has been organized almost always. Again, it's only one, one out of 10,000 times that this happens. Um, the, t the typical person, it, it uh, builds on that organization that happened before birth and really, really masculinizes the men and then does the opposite, you know, for the females. One in 30,000, it's even more rare for this process to, to be reversed and for it to be a woman uh, who feels like a man. So one in 30,000 transgender, you know, female to male uh, births happen. So that's, kind of, that's, that's what we know so far on extremely rare times it actually happens physically that it happens. And so 
we've always probably had those. Again, think of that. Your average is one in 20,000 births. Um, but now we have high schools that supposedly have 10, you know, in a, in a, in a high school of 1,500 kids, they supposedly have 10 transgender, you know, students in, in them. The odds of that, well, they're impossible odds. So um, we've got a really, really false situation, first of all. And second of all, a very unfortunate situation because especially if these young people, they cut parts off, you know, I mean, there's gonna, there's no coming back from that, but it's so rare. It's so rare. And, you know, something that's, that, that's hard to see, you can't see it, you know, you can't see how they're, how they're feeling. Um, but they, one thing that you can see that, that is analogous to this is what we call intersex, you know, intersex, which they used to call it hermaphrodite, where you have both, you have, it's kind of ambiguous whether you're male or female when you're born. You have both uh, types. Um, it happens one in 5,000 times. And so at that point, they have to kind of decide, you know, are we going to, is this going to be a male person or a female person? But so anomalies, I guess what I'm saying is physically, you can see it happen in that case. And then there's other situations where girls are exposed to more uh, androgens before birth than they would be normally. It's called con congenital and adrenal hyperplasia. They come out more masculine than, than the typical female does. And then there's another case where there's a XY baby um, that's born that has complete androgen ins insensitivity syndrome, CAIS. And it's a male, but since it's, it doesn't have the receptors to be able to be affected by, by androgen, by, by male hormones, it, you know, it's born, they think it's a girl. It grows up, to, you know, to be a girl, except it doesn't, doesn't get its period and doesn't have ovaries. They, they discover it doesn't have ovaries or a, or a uterus because it never, never developed. But on the outside, they look like a, a, a female. So, but they have testes that, that are up inside and they never descended. So, so in all these so, situations, anyway. so in all these situations, you either have an XX or an XY generally. So it's just something happens within development that's going to affect how that necessarily plays out in the physical body. Correct. And, okay. and all of it together, here's what people should, should realize is that all of it, LGBT and Q and whatever else you can throw into that, every, everybody that is not heterosexual comes to a total of uh, less than 4% of our population, of world population. So three point something percent. And, you know, with the amount of, I don't know, uh, how, how much attention is given to it and all of that. And, and then uh, we have all these problems with the 96%, 96 plus percent of us that are heterosexual that's going on. I guess I, I it's, it's hard to describe, but I, I just think that there are people that are trying to take advantage of this and, and especially with the transgender thing and make girls and boys think that they're, they're, they're not what they, you know, what they appear to be. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, I think there's going to be a ton of, of lawsuits coming coming on in the future because most of these biological, you know, looking like a boy or a girl, the odds are with you that it's going to, by the time they get into their you know late teens, it's going to have resolved itself. And if they've gotten rid of their breasts or their testicles and, you know, penis and that type of thing, it's going to be a horrible realization when they come to, they realize that, boy, I'm a man or I'm a woman, you know, and sad. One of them I saw, one of the, the, the females that thought she was a male, um, she had had her breast removed, like at like 12, you know, tw or maybe 13 or 14, I guess it's 13 or 14. And uh, her question was, well, when, they're when are they gonna grow back? You know, and they're not growing back, you know? <laughs> so anyway, it, 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 uh, scientifically, it, there is reality there as far as transgender goes. But again, I want to emphasize it's extremely rare. Extremely isn't even a strong enough word for it. You know, one in 20,000 uh, uh, occasion that actually happens. And then again, intersex where you have both and, and it's obvious you have both is one in 5,000. So, so anyway, that's a, a quick one on that, that subject, but um, yeah.